Today's show is brought to you by StickerU.com. Brand your brew with StickerU. StickerU's online design editor allows you to upload and design your own custom, professional-grade craft brew labels in any shape, any size, and any quantity. StickerU. Make what matters stick. Entertaining shows with content that spreads information and sparks discourse throughout the community. This is the Pearl Media Network. Oh, hey there. Welcome to the Homebrew Happy Hour. This is the show where we supply the answers to your homebrewing questions and discuss all things related to craft beer. If you have a question you'd like us to discuss on a future episode, visit homebrewhappyhour.com and click on the submit a question link at the top of the page. Or now you can call or text them in by using 325-305-6107. I am your host, Joshua Studing. Today I'm joined by the Director of Operations at cmbecker.com, Mr. James Carlson. How, howdy, howdy. how are you doing today, my friend? I'm good. How are you doing? I uh, wonderful. I'm doing gr- uh, the weather. It, it could be cooler. Mm, yeah. yeah, it's still a little hot. A little hot. I think yesterday uh, we got in the car, and granted, I don't know when are car readings accurate. You're the car guy. How long do I have to be driving for that reading to be accurate? Uh, I would say enough to for the for the air to cool down the sensor because the sensor's buried under usually either at or behind the grill. Uh huh. And so it's kind of like a uh, easy bake oven. So that sensor is being baked. And uh, there's been times, and I've been guilty of this, I'll snap a picture of it and then send it to my brother and say, look, because we always have a pissing contest, you would say, <laughs> on who has the most hot weather. Oh, yeah. He, al- he always does, but I like to rub it in. So I'll do 109 and then get to going down the road home, and it'll all go all the way down to like 98. So a few minutes well, to okay. cool it well, down will work. You know, it's funny because I think that's all the Instagram photos that people post of the temperature. I always wonder, like, is that like right when they got in the car? Because That's it. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to start doing that now that I know the secret. But yesterday, our car, or, or pardon me, it was Monday. Today is Thursday, uh, the 22nd. Monday, I think it read like 108 in our car. Yeah. And my, my, yeah. my wife was like, oh, my God, it's 108. And I was like, <laughs> No, no. Well, in here, but uh, you know, I'm, well, that's why we're not putting the kids in yet. I turned the AC on and cooled it down. But like, no, it's not 108, baby. She's no, like, it's 108 where that sensor set in baking. Correct. Yeah, so. I say correct like I knew. I just learned today <laughs> from James Carlson, and I'm already acting like I know. Yeah, obviously she's the idiot, not me. Yeah, uh, you know, that's uh, probably 120 in the car. You know. Yeah, pro- you're right. Oh, so the problem with this minivan, like when we got it, and it ha- it has leather, or I-, I don't even know if it's real leather. To be honest, I doubt it. It's probably it is. Is it uh, real yeah, leather? It is. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So the only time they don't put real leather uh, in in most of the domestic, the big three, is around the base. Like on the sides, where oh, it's not yeah. going to see a lot of wear and tear, but uh, they they're slowly getting away from that, or they were when I left the industry. But a lot of the high end vehicles, you'd be surprised, they'd have pleather on the sides and leather for the seating surface. Interesting. Yeah, you know? ours is a 2016 Town and Country. Don't email me your judgment. People. <laughs> uh, mini, we have a minivan and a motorcycle. That's how we get around, or how I get around. But uh, the minivan. The seats, these leather seats, they get hot. They get oh, yeah. really hot. And so my poor kids, uh, it only happens like once a year where I forget like how hot it is outside. And we all, let's all go load up. We're going to go to <laughs> after school program or whatever. And they, they get in the car and burn their poor little legs up because they sit Aww. in their seat. And so now I'm, I'm pretty good about starting the car five, 10 minutes before they get in. And I don't know what, if that's, I mean, it cools the car down. I have no idea if that's bad for the engine or bad for anything on the car. No, no, no. Nowadays, they've got fantastic cooling, and and they can. They're a lot better built now than they used to be. Yeah, thankfully, man. And our yep. driving's so minimal. I'm hoping to get uh, 30 years out of this car. <laughs> Just, also, because I'm <laughs> yeah. cheap. But we we drive in like a f- an eight mile radius 90 percent of the time. So I'm hoping that low mileage will. And we just put new tires on it. Uh, yeah. I hope, it, but yeah, enough. This isn't car talk. Uh, <laughs> Homebrew, hey, I was looking at the notes. Can you believe we're at 146 episodes? I know. I was like, that that doesn't even, how is it even possible? I feel like it was yesterday you were in here in this office, which was clean at the time, <laughs> uh, for episode 50. 
Where, yeah, 100. I, where I was shaved. Well, we also or was did, it 50? So we, or did, it... we did 50 first in here. Okay. Um, 100, 100, I don't, you couldn't make it. Joe. That's right. Yeah, I missed that one. Joe and Todd came for the 100th. For the 50th, you came because I shaved. And, yeah, that's uh, right. And I want it, you know, 150 is coming up. And I'm going to look at the calendar. So NetSuite's 47, 48. Uh, let's see, 49. So the 50th would be on September 19th, or I mean the 150th. We got to think of something. Maybe I could wow, come up there. You know, you realize if you would have said October the fifteenth, that would have been my fiftieth birthday. Oh wow! One hundred and fiftieth uh, episode. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we well now we got to do something for your birthday. <laughs> yeah, I'll just do do, the, do nothing. The the listener who takes note is going to send you beer. Yeah, wink, wink, <laughs> nod, nod. That, that works sometimes. Yay! Yeah, yeah. That, it works sometimes. Like uh, so September nineteenth is our hundred fiftieth. I got to figure something for us to do. Uh, yeah. Maybe I'll come up there because also you know that Saturday. Is Oktoberfest at Real Ale in Blanco? Uh, yeah, and I, you and you had us tickets last year, and I bailed on you. Oh, you and Todd, you and yeah. Todd. I have tickets again this year. Uh, if anyone's in the Central Texas area, come hang out with us at Real Ale on September 21st. My pop's gonna be there. Um, I ha- I have not sent the email out to y'all yet, uh, mainly because this is a great segue to Todd. Todd's yeah. whole so. Are you, are you in town first off for the 21st? I saw you looking at your calendar. Uh, yeah, I'm looking to see if I, I don't have it wrote down. I've got to see if I have my daughter or not. You know, Maybe the week I have Emily. Well, man, she they have face painting and kids activities. <laughs> I mean, I know she's 14, face painting. Well, <laughs> she just started high school this week, this <laughs> Wednesday, and uh, she's in athletics. So they're doing volleyball right now. And, uh, boy, it's a whole different deal, volleyball in high school versus middle school. Oh yeah, the commitment, I mean, it, right? Oh my gosh, it was last week. It was Thursday, Friday, Saturday, <laughs> all day long till late at night. So a lot of the things that I used to do on the weekends are pretty much shot now because my daughter's an athletic. But at least everyone knows you're a good father. See, when people see my Instagram and I'm I'm out, you know, jujitsu this or that, they're like, "Don't you have kids?" I'm like, "Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> yeah. Don't bring that negativity around these parts, friend." Well, uh, when I was a kid, my parents never went to anything I did. Oh, and no. that was common with all the other kids. Yep. You know, they were like, son, I was taking care of you and putting clothes on your back. That's right. Food on you know? your table. Yep. Yeah. My my pop, for he was very active. He uh, we, we did soccer growing up, and he, he was all about it. So fortunately, he was there. But like, my kids are doing... Uh, like my middle kid is doing jujitsu now. So that oh, helps cool. that helps me be yeah. there because I'm already gonna be there. And my oldest, uh, they both did ballet, which we went as I went as much as I could, obviously the performances, but they're my oldest is doing this art camp thing one, uh, once a week. So I don't have to go to that. So it's like, oh man, my kid, I'm <laughs> winning the lottery right now with extracurricular activities. Cause yeah, I know from experience of being a, a, a in athletic programs my whole life, yeah. the, com- the parental commitment, um, I I don't envy you. <laughs> Yeah. And that's just, I just have one kid guys, just one kid. My brother has two, my sister has two and uh, they're a little older than Emily and they never have any free time. Never. That's what we get for having kids. But I think they do ch- at some age, they do chores, right? Like, I mean, like uh, uh, there's a reason I don't I know. Kids. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> my daughter's definition of Doing chores and mine, they don't match. Yeah. You know, there's I'm like, no, you didn't. Yeah. Just try. <laughs> Just try a little bit. I've I've been taking notes from you and Todd. Uh, yeah. s- some notes for what to do, some notes for not what to do. So, and, <laughs> uh, which speaking of Todd, uh, Todd, we have an update on him. Poor guy, he has not one, he has two herniated discs at the top of his spine. Um, yeah. and and I thought because his first. Uh, visit. I believe they thought it was just bulging disc. Yeah, and yeah. and I told him that's the first time someone's told him use the word bulging with him. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> ha ha, dun dun. But uh, he was saying that they're actually herniated. So now I felt terrible that I was making fun of him for the pain. I, I wasn't making fun of him for the pain. He was obviously hurting. And oh, yeah. I can't take things serious. So what I did was just joke like, "Oh, come on, get over it. You're fine." No, he's not. He's not fine no, at all. No, he's yeah, he's having surgery the third. Yep, so. September the third. Uh, they're in Abilene, I believe. It is, yeah. And that fact, fact, my dad had the same surgery done 
damn near in the same area of his neck. No way. And yeah, and, and then he had it done in Abilene. And, how, had, how did it turn it, out for your pop? I want words of encouragement. It, now, this was 30, over 30 years ago, and it took seemed like it took months for him to get better. But that whole thing has gotten so much better in 30 years that uh, yeah, well, Todd claims two weeks. He's going to be That's what I was going to say. He told me two weeks is what they said. I told him, take your time, man, because yeah, like, few, don't rush it. Few, they're, it's technically called fusing, right? That's what they're yeah. doing. Yeah, absolutely. That, yeah, they're going to take they're going to pull that disc out and they're going to take some, a bone graft probably from his hip and then they're going to fuse and staple and screw those two vertebrae together. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it doesn't sound like fun at no, all. No, in jiu-jitsu a lot of people get injuries where like fusion surgery or the procedure is necessary and you know, I've had a bum neck for a couple of years and I yeah. always think I don't have health insurance by choice. Not throwing Todd under the bus. He <laughs> offers the program. I don't buy into it. I, you yeah. know, I have to clear that out. So Todd, doesn't gosh, it's it. so expensive. It wow. is so expensive. And, but so I choose not to have health insurance. And I think I pay, I pay to go have people beat me up and get, and make my neck worse. <laughs> One day with the doctor to tell me, sir, the only way to correct this is either to anti-age or to have surgery. And I'm just yeah. going to go, oh, I guess I'm just going to look like this from now on. Mm-hmm. You know, neck, all, neck all crooked. And I pop my neck all the time. People have noticed. Yeah, I don't do that. Oh, I shouldn't do that? Or you don't? No, don't pop your neck. I was reading an article the other day. And a guy, had uh, he had gotten paralysis. He popped his neck too hard and messed his, got into a spinal cord. I'm like. Oh, don't tell me this stuff. Yeah, don't tell yeah, me this that, stuff. James. Just let that marinate in your head a little bit. No. <laughs> you think I don't already? I panic Golly. over everything. I, I don't go to a chiropractor because I believe I'm going to be the point zero 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 whatever one percent it is of people that have super adverse side effects. But in yeah. my ultimate wisdom, I do it myself. I just go here and... <laughs> Yeah, that's what he was doing. And, and you pull it up. Google that. App, no, that I'm not going to pull that up, you jerk. You might as well tell me to go to WebMD and type in my symptoms. Yeah. But yeah, you can do this all day long. You just don't. There's not a spinal cord in here. Yeah. You know? Well, there's also, so, so the thing that I've been told to look out for when popping the neck is that if you can do it without force, then it's mm-hmm. acceptable. When you start having to add force, it's not acceptable because there's some artery that you can tear, which is like a precursor to having a, a stroke. So oh, like, you gosh. may not you may not break it immediately, but if you tear it at all, which I'm sure I have. Mm. Look, man, I'm middle aged. I've accepted it. I'm 33. 66 <laughs> is going to be wonderful to just croak if I make it that long. But yeah. I look forward to having the inspirational "I Survived a Stroke" story on episode 9,000 of Homebrew <laughs> Happy Hour. But anyway, Todd, uh, we will have an update after his surgery next week. I'm thinking about coming up there. Uh, if I'm, I'm going to talk to Liz, I'm going to be there Monday and Tuesday yeah. and not next yeah, we week. Got, Pardon me, we not got next all week. the stuff ordered. Yes. So it'll be here for you to set up for. Yeah. Him. And not, not next week. I apologize. September the 3rd is when he's having it, which I believe is a Tuesday. Uh, yeah, but I'm talking about your visit next week. You're going to have a desk and all kinds of y- stuff yes to put to together up. at his barn. Yeah, we're trying. Yeah. Everyone is put, and thankfully he's in so much pain. He's not pushing back. But we're all pushing him to. You need to work from home. There's no reason yeah. to travel on the road because driving apparently just kills him. And yeah. so we're going to set him up with a stand up desk, one a modular one or a, a retractable, or whatever the term is that you can. Yeah, we ordered an electric one. There you so go. it's got buttons on the side and he can raise it and lower it and no crank or anything like that yep so we're gonna make him work from home as he heals because i think like the body we're we're feeble man uh as humans we're not as invincible as i thought i was just even 10 years ago so we have to take care of ourselves and todd has not been known to do that he doesn't take care of or i say he doesn't take care of himself i i don't mean that as much as i mean he will push himself past his limit because it has to get done or because he feels like he's hit can or he forgets that he's 53. Yeah. He doesn't know when to stop. That's for sure. He does not know Mm -hmm. when to stop. So we're making him stop, but yeah, we'll have an update after his surgery. And then um, one more thing to, to, before we get into the questions for today, we do have uh, an announcement about our label contest. It's wrapping up at the end of the month. So August the 30th, how many days are there in August? friend yeah the 31st uh, we've got, yeah we've so, got a week and a day <laughs> i feel embarrassed i was about to do the knuckle thing where you go uh, january february march April. okay uh we are ending it august the 30th actually that's the friday so not the 31st 
I had to look at my notes. If you go to homebrewhappyhour.com forward slash contest, you can see the details. It doesn't have to be necessarily bottle labels like I've mentioned before. You can you can submit your brewery logo, your home brewery logo. If you're a professional brewer and you're submitting your logo, we might have some discrepancies there. But uh, you need to uh, – a growler label, uh, keg labels like what we've done. There's been a lot of submissions. If you want to enter for a chance at winning $200 in custom printed labels, uh, second prize is 175 $5 worth of custom printed labels and third prize is $125 worth. So go to homebrewhappyhour.com forward slash contest, click on the sticker you button and it'll walk you through how to enter. With all that being said, I do have a couple questions for us. If you don't mind me getting into those, Mr. Carlson. Question, I am ready. Question number one comes from Mark, who used the submission form at homebrewhappyhour.com. Mark wrote, hey, guys, love the show. I found your podcast a couple of months ago, and I've been burning through them to get up to date. I've learned a ton, and you definitely have the best homebrewing podcast out there. Relevant info, down-to-earth experts, and an enjoyable presentation. Oh, no, where'd my question go? There it goes. Man, why is this keep moving around? Uh, sorry about that. My, my, my whole screen just jumped on my tablet. Uh, enjoyable presentation, and I love it. Uh, and I want my question to get picked. Mark, you're smart. because here's me. <laughs> Yeah, he knew what to say, didn't he? Here's me reading your question. Now, I don't <laughs> want everyone doing that, but you are smart. Uh, yes. Earlier in the year, you guys were raving about Todd's winter warmer, and he talked about it briefly. I'm pretty new to brewing and recently have made the switch to all grain via brew in a bag. I really want to brew something similar for my family for this Christmas, and I know he talked a lot about aging it. Can you explain a little bit about aging? How long should I age a Christmas styled beer? What is the purpose of aging? And can I just leave it in the secondary fermenter for a month or two? Again, thanks, guys. I really enjoy listening and following you all on Instagram. I'd love to send you guys some of my homebrew for critiques and help if you're open to it and won't roast me too bad. No, we're not going to. We, we you, Y'all bring all the beer, send all the beer you, you want. <laughs> and uh, we will check it out. But for put you. my no name on the box because <laughs> if Todd or James' names on no, no, <laughs> my name on the box. Uh, Mark, I, I appreciate the kind words. Again, joking, y'all don't have to suck up to me. I, I have to remember my wife tells me that my sarcasm and the shtits that I go down aren't always separable from reality. So <laughs> I do love Kolsch, it's not the only thing I drink. I have a massive ego when you stroke it, and I appreciate it, but you don't have to do that. We'll still take your question on the air. But let's let's discuss the winter warmer just finally tapped him two months ago or a month ago. He finally floated the keg. Did he? Yeah. Let's see. He brewed that when? He brewed that in October? He brewed it in October. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. That was right before we went to the brow. Correct. And so that almost is a great segue into answering the question, because right now going into September would be mm -hmm. the perfect time to start brewing a winter warmer. Don't you agree? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because I would think something that has a pretty complex grain bill, uh, lots of caramelized malt, you would want to let it condition like a stout or uh, the only thing that would not you wouldn't want to condition a long time would be something that's. You know, hops, as far as hop aromatics, they tend to dissolve over time. So if you're going to do an IPA or a double IPA or anything that's real hop heavy, you wouldn't want to condition that very long because it's going to actually change and then the hop notes are going to go away. So, uh, you know, anything that's not super hoppy, you know, you're using a lot of crystal malt or, or caramelized malt, I would, they always do better for six I would do six to eight weeks minimum conditioning time. And we've addressed this more or less in other episodes, but let's recap on what is aging accomplish? What are you doing or are you trying to meet an end goal with aging or is it just like because the beard just naturally gets better? Is there some scientific process for why aging matters? I, I'm sure there is. And it's, it's if it's scientific, then it's way over my head. <laughs> Me too. But, I can tell you that uh, over time, everything that's been created in that beer tends to level off and mix together and meld and condition and just makes it a lot better. Some of the stuff that, uh, oh gosh, where, where would we start on that? <laughs> I mean, that, that's a that's a deep hole it is. if you want to go there, but I would just say that if you want to try, um, I read an interesting article one time about uh, the five, it was like a five bottle rule. And what that is, is take, go ahead and do your beer, 
and then put whatever you have when you when you start drinking it, put it in five bottles, store it away, and try it at different points. And it was interesting because I never thought about doing it that way because then you can write the date when you served it and you can take notes and you can see what the difference and how much it will change over time just from sitting in the in the in the bottle. Well, that is interesting. That would be yeah. cool to try. Are there factors? Oh, I guess there's always factors. And again, I don't want to go too deep down rabbit holes, but yeah. you, you could have an infection in a bottle or or the prime, sure. too much priming sugar or something. I'm just trying to grow through my head like what would be a variable. But as long I mean, as long as you have your bases covered, uh, mm-hmm. that would be a great experiment to do with the beer. Yeah. Absolutely. The only thing I would tell you is, you know, we talked about, we touched uh, this subject a little bit on a previous episode when we were talking about secondary fermentation. And I think that uh, it's absolutely unnecessary. I don't do it. <laughs> um, and a lot of people feel the same way. I yep. think that the, the the judgment on secondary fermentation has come out that it really doesn't make that big a difference. I think it makes a bigger difference in clarifying the beer, but then you risk oxygenating the beer or oxidizing the beer, which is no trade-off for me. I'd rather drink good cloudy beer than than, than cardboard clear beer. You don't like cardboard? Come on. I don't. And, you know, that's one of the one flaws that I can pick up immediately. Uh, all the other stuff like the cooked cabbage and all of that, you know, that that's not good at all. In fact, we ran into uh, – uh, we had a batch of beer the – the uh what was that the lemon drop pilsner had oh uh, that's right at home yeah, yeah. yeah i had had a, a flaw in it and it and we had to pour it out one keg did the other keg didn't. right the and, first keg we tapped didn't and it was mm-hmm. widely received uh right. very popular and mm-hmm. then the last day you're right we we poured some and fortunately it was our buddy michael ferguson yeah, and yeah. He he's was, a he's a judge isn't he he, I, I would, he has to be bjc certified yeah. he has to be but he was at our booth and he just, you know, he was very nice about it and, and also kind of ribbed me because he thought I brewed it. And I told him jokes on you, buddy, we don't bring my beer, but he just said he sniffed it and or he drank some and he kind of had a look on his face and then he handed it to me and said, yeah. you may want to try that. And his, I, I have to do better at his voice. You may want to yeah. try that. You may want to try that. <laughs> I, I, I love Michael to death. And I, so I, I, I tried it and I was like, this isn't my style anyway. What am I tasting wrong? And yeah. <laughs> no, it was pretty obvious. It wasn't. Yeah, we couldn't. We could have served it and explained ourselves, but that would have been, accomplished nothing. So we poured it. No, no, it, it's better to just throw it out. But you know, barring any infections, you're always going to get a better beer. Now, a, a wheat beer or a hop forward beer, you want to you know do do the normal two or three week deal. But I like, for instance, on the alt beers that we brew. You know, that thing will set for six to eight weeks. And, and and I, you know, the main reason why I set my alt beer that long is it clarifies. Yep. You know, but it does produce a better taste. So if you've got some like wangy notes that may nest, might be attributed to bitterness or hot bitterness, that can go away over time by conditioning. Um, I, I think it's a great idea. I think we need to try that. The only thing I wouldn't condition too terribly long would be like a, like our Colts. Right. You know, that, yeah, totally. you know, that, that's such a pale light session beer that, you know, it, I don't, it would do, the only thing it would do is it would just clarify, you know, it's not super hoppy anyway. So it's not like it would, it would, the hop notes would go away. Um, the only thing we could possibly do on the Colts would be three to four weeks to clarify and make it bright. But, you know, it's it's not a bad idea to condition, especially if you're going to do stouts or you're going to do darker uh, ales and, and darker lagers. It, mm-hmm. It'll help. Speaking of Kolsch, since, I mean, you brought it up, uh, yeah. the Kolsch that we served at my pop's retirement party was the batch. Uh, you still had we still had maybe two and a half gallons of the batch you gave me. Mm-hmm. And, and then we had a maybe a gallon and a half of our batch. Uh, well, yeah. I still have a bunch in my kegerator. I have a bunch, a th- two or three gallons. Cool. Went o- it went over very well with with the the normies, I guess we'd call them, the non brewers who all yeah. came and brought their Bud Light or whatever. They one person did say he he's my pop's neighbor, real nice guy named Marty. He's just been drinking Bud Light since he was probably probably yeah. out of the womb, to be honest. There are different people right. in that area, but he 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 tasted it and he goes, "Huh, that is uh." 
that is interesting. And then he grabbed his Bud Light and walked away. <laughs> He was the best because he, he was already three no sheets. No accounting for taste, right? He, he was already three sheets, but he uh, he he was he, yeah. It was uh, that uh, that's interesting. <laughs> Took off. I don't want to harp on the lemon drop pilsner incident, but what I do like my favorite part of the whole story is you you took it and dumped it in the bathroom. I yeah. wish I would have been in the bathroom in that urinal line whenever you went in the stall and poured it because if, if they didn't see you go in there with the keg, that would have had to sound like the hardest, longest piss anyone's <laughs> ever taken. <laughs> yeah, and it was the day after club night. It so, was. Yeah, you know, you know, lots of hungover people that day. Oh, that's my favorite morning. <laughs> and there's still people who come up there wobbling to the booth and, uh, what are you pouring? Uh, you need yeah, coffee. You need coffee, man. <laughs> I think the rule of thumb some of them have is you, if you you can't let the hangover set in, so they just yeah. keep parlaying you gotta nurse it. Yeah. every night. Oh, they are partiers. Mark, thank you so much for submitting the question. Moving on to our last question, really good first name. Josh, using the submission form at homebrewhappyhour.com, wrote in, Hi, guys. I love the show. I'm listening from Mafra in Australia. I've wow. Been- I know I didn't. I uh I can't do an Australian. Good eye, mate. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was stupid. I'm gonna cut that out. But I'm not because I'm lazy. Okay, back to his question. I've been brewing at Strat for over five years and have recently moved into all grain, and I'm loving it. I've done two brews, with the second one being my own recipe, which is fermenting away, and I'm very proud of that. You should be. That's fantastic. Yeah, congrats. That's a heck of an achievement. Super cool. Since starting yeah. all grain, I have also started adjusting my water pH for the mash. I can't help but wonder if I should be matching my sparge water pH level to that of my strike water. Is there a benefit or is it pointless? My gut is telling me I definitely should. This, you know, this would have been a great question if like having Lorena on for a water episode, but you, oh yeah, she would know only it, because yeah. I never would have thought of something like this. Cause I, yeah. we don't do, and by we, I mean me and my pop, we don't do water profiles at all. We get the well water and we're just, mm-hmm. we're content with it. We should be doing water profiles if we want to get the most out of a style or well, the, yeah, but th- that being said, you, you're making good beer. Totally. So right. If you're making good beer with the water you have, then continue to make good beer. Totally. And we're lazy, but too. we are. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, there's, there's levels to uh, anything. I, you can go overboard with water profiles. Right. You know, I, I, I don't, I try to keep it simple. We use RO water. So RO water has a, has the optimal range for mashing. I think it's five between 5.1, 5.3. Um, it, you want to get that in that range. The the I personally think that the pH is real important when you're creating sugars, which is the mash. But you know, if I was if I was gonna pay closer attention to water profiles and pH, I just do the whole thing. I would do the whole thing that you need. So then at least you have a baseline for that brew. Yep. And then you can you can check and see if does that make a difference. And and. And it's just easier if you're gonna if you're gonna need this much water, you're gonna want to do the whole thing the same way. It just kind of levels the whole brewing process. I agree yeah. that that that's what I had to offer. <laughs> Was gonna say yeah. it would make sense or do t- the same batch uh, or the same style different to, because I don't know if I think the science would say literally there is going to be a difference. Yeah, yeah. Is yeah. it a noticeable difference is the subjective sort of question we we don't really have an answer to because oh. I don't know. I don't know if there is a definitive here, yes, it matters, or here's the benefit yeah. and blah blah blah. It do you know of an objective reason why you should, besides just because everything's gonna be the same in your water profile? The only reason I would come up with as far as sparging is if you have a water that's ex- exceptionally high pH, we're talking about anything over 5.8 or 6, uh-huh. then what can uh, what can happen if you're sparging with water that's got that high level of pH, it can actually, it can draw more tannins out into the, into the beer versus a lower pH water. So you, you do want to monitor that. And I do for the most part. Um, in fact, I use these test strips. Oh, nice. And, uh, this is a company called Hydrion, H-Y-D-R-I-O-N, Hydrion, 
and they're with microessentiallab.com and they're simple to use. You don't have to spend a lot of money on a pH gun. Um, I think as long as you're within, what's cool about these is, is you can see it's got the uh, pH range on it. And, you know, I try to stay between 4.7. These three bars, if I can, I try to stay right here. And I usually, for the most part, with the RO water we use, I can usually hit it every time right there. What are those numbers again? Just because we have a lot of audio only. <laughs> uh, if you want it, like RO water, our RO water, we use a uh, system that Todd got off of Amazon, and it'll it'll produce 5.1 pH water. And commonly, most people will say you want to be between 5.1 and 5.4 ideally for mashing or creating sugars in your rest. If you go over 5.8 in your sparge, you can bring tannins in to the wart and it can cause some bitterness. I need to get a strip because we've never even tested the water that we're brewing uh, with. We've, we've got a bunch of these in my office. So That's what I meant. I was going to steal it when you were when you went to lunch I've or got something. I was <laughs> probably a dozen of these. So you're welcome to as I, many as you need. I do love to because I, I make a lot of visual references now on the show, and we all do, and it is driving. It has been the best driver of people to our YouTube channel than anything that we, right. that I've ever done is by because people listen to the audio. I've gotten feedback. They're not angry. They just go, yeah. I have to tell you, Josh, I went to your YouTube, but because I wanted to see what the heck you were talking about. And I yeah. said, I wish I was smart enough to have done that on purpose. Um, I have in the, in hindsight, it made sense. And maybe if I get smarter, I'll keep working that in. Actually, yeah. the real drive of traffic to our YouTube channel is all this wonderful content we're producing your videos on, on comparison stuff and, and Joe's videos. Uh, he just did one on the uh, grades of kids mm -hmm. and Todd, Mr. Burns, uh, did one. I just shared his jockey bots video. We have a lot of content. We got to think of some more of these like wa a water thing that we can do. Like what you said, it's something simple. Yeah. Maybe when I'm up there, you can show because even as simple as the process is, it helps to have a visual aid to know here's how you test your water. Yeah. You, you get this, the link below at whatever that website was you just said, you go to your water source, you do this and this and this, you see how it changes. Here's where mm -hmm. you want to be. If you're not, da -da 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 -da, or if you're too low, da -da 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 -da, and, and yeah. go from there. Because these simple like five minute videos, people love. Oh, yeah, because it gets right to the point. And yep. here's the most important thing. And I know it helped when I started brewing um, and more importantly, when I started all grain brewing is get to the point as simply as explain it as simply as possible because a lot of times if i try to use long words and drawn out explanations you lose the people that are trying to listen and try to learn it doesn't have to be this difficult correct you know and 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 i that's the one thing that i think we try real hard to try to make make it known that you know a certain like all grain brewing is not hard just hit your temps Keep your sanitation and you're good to go. But, you know, I know a lot of the brewing videos, whenever I was looking, man, I couldn't follow what they were talking about. And sometimes it's easy to get into that. I know more than you speak and it doesn't help. My People secret is not knowing more than anyone. So I can't speak yeah. to them. I'll pretend like the best of them. And when yeah. I, you'll know when I do know something because I turn into that guy. I'll be, oh, sorry, James, let me correct you. <laughs> but my knowledge is all useless things that don't matter. If you want to. Well, it, it doesn't need to be that way. You know, yep. and you know what I'm talking about. You've been Completely. through it. We've seen it, both of us. Uh, you experienced it. Uh, your, what, was it your first homebrew shop that you went yeah. to? Like you, yeah. yeah. We, unfortunately, 0.1% of the community can have that snobbiness to them that is yeah. very unattractive. Very, yeah. And it's not so much prevalent now. No. Yeah. I think at a time when it wasn't really cool, you know, that people had to talk it, talk it up to be cool. Maybe that, that, that doesn't make any sense, but you know what I'm saying yep. is we, we, we just want to make sure people know that it, it's not that complicated. Yeah. Just basic steps that you need to follow every time you brew and uh, try it. If it works, it works. Doesn't make it wrong. And we want more people brewing 
because we want them to then have draft systems with CM Becker faucets on it. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which I love that hat, yeah. man. I'm, I, again, I'm trying to drive people. Look at me doing my telepathy to the audio listeners. I complimented your hat. I love that hat. Those hats came out so nice. The CM Becker. It is, and you oh, know what? Man. We might we might need to send hats to the people that submitted questions. Dude, if you're committing to that, yeah. they're listening. <laughs> so yeah, we've, we've got we've got several left, and uh, I know the guy that made them, so we can always make more. Yeah, he's like a mile from the office. Yeah, I did I, a heck of a job too. I love it. I, I I reached out to Marty because I have some one-off shirt designs. I'm trying to. We right now we have a merch store um, through, mm-hmm. through Teespring. I don't know the URL. I'm not that good at marketing, even though that's what Todd pays me to do. But <laughs> if you go to yeah, he does, he's not listening. He's not on this episode, so he's not listening. <laughs> if you go to Teespring and look up Homebrew Happy Hour, you'll see our storefront. Very little orders have come through, and I get it because we're not pushing it. But what I thought was it would be a lot better if we had control over a merch store. And so sure. be- because we have that connection with Marty, I thought I want to ask him, what could we do small runs? Because the problem with print getting merch is one, having inventory. I don't want yeah. I don't want to manage an online shop full of all these different inventory. I'd rather just, hey, Joe Blow just ordered this shirt in a large. Marty, can you make this shirt in a large? Yeah, it'll be ready yeah. in three days. Okay, Joe, we're gonna ship it out in three days. Bada bing, bada boom. That's my sure. best case. So I'm waiting to hear back. I literally just emailed him this morning. Oh, okay, cool. So, yeah, so, he's a great guy. A great guy. And so I'm looking forward to that possibility because people, ha- you know, the shirts we've made for Homebrew Happy Hour that we gave away at the podcast, mm-hmm. a lot of people would like to get that shirt. And even if we don't sell them, even if we give them away to people who are submitting questions, it'd be nice to not have to stock a ton of them because the minimum order for a lot of shirt companies is like 144. It's in different sizes, but. It's not cheap to make shirts, guys. It's just oh. not cheap, and I'm not confident in my ability to sell them. And so we, I'm trying to figure out the most frugal, uh, streamlined way of doing it. But anyway, I have totally digressed from Josh's question. So, yes, uh, we agree. Tr- yeah. Do you yeah, say I, I would say uh, just if you're going to treat one – batch of water why not just treat the whole thing yes and then be done with it there's people that'll say treat the sparge i mean treat treat the mash water not the sparge and then i'll say okay you can you can treat the sparge water but just add the salts don't add acids and then there's another group that'll say well add this acids but don't add the salts <laughs> and then, wow. me i like just do both yeah and it would make it'll make everything easier and on the same page yeah that's all we can ask for Mm-hmm. Josh, thank you so much for submitting your question. James, that that does it for this show, my friend. I appreciate your time. I'm, yeah. I'm going to see you Monday. I have uh, four of those alt shot alts left. I'm going to bring some for us. I'm going to bring the four of them up for us so that we can enjoy them. You've, you've had their alt before. You actually got me a crowler of it, I believe, at yeah. one point. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, first time that we visited it. So I'm going to bring some up for us uh, because it's just taking up space in my fridge and I want to get consumed sooner than later so i'll see you soon my friend thanks and that will do it for this episode of the homebrew happy hour if you have a question you'd like us to discuss on a future episode visit homebrewhappyhour.com and click on the submit a question link at the top of the page or now you can call or text them in to 325-305-6107 Thank you to our show sponsor, StickerU.com, for supporting our podcast and the homebrewing community. Enter our label contest right now at homebrewhappyhour.com forward slash contest for a chance at winning $200 in printed custom labels. Contest runs now through the end of the month. On behalf of James Carlson, the absent and recovering Todd Burns, and the Pearl Media Network, I'm Joshua Steubing. Thank you for listening. <laughs>